and now we'll um, introduce Sir Mustafa, who will tell you his story. Uh, good afternoon. Thank good you for um, my name is Mustafa Qureshi. I'm the chairperson of the Jazeera Association. Uh, it's a historical and uh, looks at her the history and heritage of Muslim groups in Cyprus. Um, as many of you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Muslim, black, I'm Turkey Cypriot. However, I do have black heritage, of which I'm very proud of. And um, I'm here representing the Afro Cypriots group. Uh, my, my story is going to be slightly well, different from the other speakers in that it's a community that lives in Barney, lives around London and upon first sight you might think, oh maybe they're from African Caribbean background there's certain presumptions made upon appearance so I think it's uh, be wise for me to go into the background, the history of the black community in Cyprus because not many people are aware that there is such a community out there and then uh, progress to today in London um, Blacks in uh, Cyprus have been always there since ancient times. Um, they were taken as slaves um, in the Venetian era. Uh, Nubian or Ethiopian was even reported as one of the languages spoken in Cyprus. So already we get an idea of a settled community of a large number. However, if we were to look at the, the black uh, descendants of what we have now, the uh, black Turks of Cyprus, uh, we need to focus on the Ottoman era and uh, during this time once again they were taken as slaves however um, it's worth noting that it was blacks taking other blacks mm. as slaves mm -hmm. so now that we live in a, a society where the nationalist ideologies are very strong it's quite strange to imagine that there was no black solidarity uh, between Africans, but just as there was no white solidarity for slaves taken from the Black Sea region, um, and they were sold, and the typical route would be they were taken to Egypt, and for there they were taken to Istanbul and to Cyprus, or directly from Egypt to Cyprus. And uh, as many of them were Muslims, and Cyprus was part of an Islamic empire, which was governed by the Sharia of Islamic law. Uh, Muslim slaves were only allowed to be sold to other Muslims so that their rights as Muslims would be ensured. And this, in a way, um, provides a clear difference between the transatlantic slave trade where it was based solely on race, where they would take black people and blacks were solely um, used as slaves, whilst in the Ottoman Empire they were white slaves and black slaves. In fact, in the years uh, from 1590 to 1640, there was an exact 50-50 ratio between whites and blacks. So it was nothing to do with racism, it was um, a global market that was for slaves, yeah. you can say, unfortunately. But it's very, there's a clear difference between the transatlantic um, slave trade, which was a racist institution. And, um, as I mentioned, because there was a Sharia involved and they were sold only to other Muslims, um, the slaves were somehow, without trying to justify it, the slavery, um, they were made as an extension of the family. So they were given roles such as domestic roles or agricultural. Um, also, um, but many of the slaves that were taken, they were predominantly taken from uh, in between the White Island and Brunei, uh, which is in current Sudan. Um, in the regions of Sinaro, Darfur areas. Um, it's also important to note that blacks in Cyprus, there was no differentiation. Many, uh, many of the slaves would actually be freed. It was seen as a very rewarding uh, thing to do. And once they were free, there was no restriction on the type of jobs that they could do. Many went on to be very successful. Uh, mixed marriages were very common. So, for example, my uh, black African ancestor, he married someone who was known to be very white, and there was no um, sort of prejudice towards this, like we find in Western cultures. Um, the, the, the black community in Cyprus they were spread throughout the island. However, there were certain areas where there were 
more than others more of them, such as uh, Evdin and Piskovo. These are well-known villages before 1974, which was dominated by uh, black Cypriots. So we have an established community, we have a high number of them as well. Uh, even today, many who you might see as white, when I tell you that they've got uh, black ancestry, there's clues in their, in their facial features, perhaps, maybe their hair. There's, there's clues, and there's, I'll tell you, there's lots of um, Turkish Cypriots, many Turkish Cypriots have um, black ancestry. Uh, this is an area which hasn't actually been researched much. And I think it's very important that we uh, look into this so that we can fully appreciate the black community as a very diverse one and not only from certain areas of Africa or the Caribbean. It's one that you can find in virtually all over the world, you can find black communities. So I think this is very, something that needs to be looked at uh, further. Uh, since Cyprus was under British occupation, uh, Cypriots, as in general, were given the British uh, citizenship and the British passports. And this gave the opportunity for many of them to move to British territories, including the um, The black community, as they were accepted and fully integrated into the Turkish society, so culturally and for as in terms of what they saw themselves as, was Turkish Cypriots, there wasn't any distinction. So they followed the migration to Britain, However, um, as many Turkish Cypriots went to Australia, uh, they were actually not allowed to go to Australia. Dark-skinned Cypriots were not allowed to go to Australia because there was a white um, only policy, white Australia policy in force at that time. So we see already where the prejudice is coming in is when the black community starts to have contact with the Western um, countries. So they, the only option was Britain. So they came and just as many Turkish Cypriots came to London, they, they also came. And this is where they actually, for the first time, um, were faced, with, were kind of hit with the fact that, wait a minute, I'm, I'm black. You know, I mean, it seems very obvious, but in Cyprus, you have white people, brown people, black people, and it's not an issue, just get over it. But when they came here, they were actually faced with the fact that, wait a minute, I'm, I'm black, you know, and it's quite unfortunate that there was this kind of immature kind of understanding of um, a multicultural society at the time. And uh, many was, it seemed that many were faced with a decision where they had to choose one or the other, which isn't fair for them. And also because we live in such a multicultural society, uh, Turks from Turkey started coming, where they haven't been faced with uh, Afro-Turks. And we've been faced with that text, so they're coming and they're seeing these people, or an English person will see, oh, why are you speaking Turkish? Why are you meeting Kabbalah a bit too much? Like, you know, it's big. What's going on here? <laughs> and they, have, they, they get frustrated, the black community in London, in Bali and generally in London, they, they do get very frustrated to have to keep explaining their identity. They, don't, they, they are black, and they are also culturally Turkish, and they're British. And they feel very frustrated that they have to keep explaining every time, oh yes, my ancestors came from so and so, and why do they need to do this? Um, and I mean, now uh, the, black, the present situation, the present condition of the black um, Turks in Cyprus is that they're fully integrated. As I said, uh, mixed marriages are very common, even in the London 2012 Olympics. Um, we had the uh, Medis Vedif, who represented Turkey. And um, her father is black, Turkish Cypriot, her mother is white. And in the media, there's no mention of her being you know, black. Or, it's not an issue. It's not an issue. And I'm happy to say, in the first Turkish baroness in the UK, Meral Hussein, is also has a black ancestry. And she's from a Turkish Cypriot background. So they're fully integrated people who become very successful. But unfortunately, in the country that they're living in now, um, they're facing problems which their ancestors didn't face. So it's kind of the opposite of your stories where there was prejudice prior to uh, prior generations of first generation of coming. So I mean hopefully this uh, gives us a better understanding of how diverse the black community is, how rich the cultures are that they come from. And so we shouldn't just uh, assume 
have their form here, I'll give some of the So, thank you for listening. I'll be here.